Previously on Maple Story the Novel, Sacred Tears. I can alter time in a single place, if that would help. Would you be willing to persuade your brother to grant me an audience? You are out of your depth, little mage. Time has been walking among humans for so long that he believes as they do. And now the continuation of Chapter 8, Part 2. Over the long millennia, humans of your world have created some rather interesting stories about us. I suppose, though, it is expected as fewer and fewer actually believe in us despite what they say. It seems that Haim didn't tell you your biggest secret either. I'm surprised. Nanahuatzin smiled walking to a small table where a few glasses and a pitcher of pale wine sat. What secret? Dane asked with apprehension. Nanahuatzin sipped a mouthful from his glass as he walked over to Dane and offered him another. Haim is well aware of the darkness, and he knows that neither he nor I can affect it in any meaningful way. So, he created a life that he brought to me. I then planted a bit of my light within that life. And when your mother and father consummated their marriage, that life was put within your mother's womb. This is why you are so acutely aware of the darkness within the world. Haim and I gave you the power to find what will rid the world of the darkness. You used me? You fated me to become what I am today? Dane asked through gritted teeth. No, White Mage, not in the least. We gave you the tools, an advantage, hoping it would guide you to a path that would eliminate the darkness. And here you stand, trying to find a way. You could still have chosen not to go down this path, but you were never fated to do anything. Then, what about the ancient mage that came before me? Asked Dane. Nanahuatzin raised a brow, stopping in mid-sip. I beg your pardon? Dane reached into his sleeve and pulled from it the journal that had started him on his path, opening it to the pages that had captivated him so long ago. This ancient mage said he too felt the darkness, and tried to find a way to beat it back, or eliminate it. He tried to do the same thing that I am doing now. Dane answered, handing the book to him. Nanahuatzin looked over the weathered pages, quickly reading over some of the entries until he came to the page completely covered with black ink. Where in Usoria did you find this? Nanahuatzin asked with a severe tone, closing the journal and looking over the battered front cover. I found it in the Great Knowledge Depository in my home city of Margata. It fell from a bookshelf along with a few others. Nanahuatzin's eyes were wide and his hands shook slightly as he handed the journal back. There was no other that came before you. This journal is not from a time of the past. The deity answered quietly. Dane lowered his brow, regarding him with growing worry. How can you tell it isn't from the past? I thought Ariel was the only one who could read or control time, Dane asked. The deity sighed, crossing his arms. Everything that exists possesses a light. It is hard to explain. Atomic decay? Is that what you mean? Is that what you humans call it? In any case, everything that exists has this light. Everything from the moment it is created to the time it is no more gives off a light similar to everything around it. The same color, if you will. This journal's light is not fading, nor is it even the same kind. Its light does not belong here in this time, nor is it from the ancient past. It is not even a relic. Are you saying that this journal is from the future? Dane asked, furrowing his brow. I can't say that with any amount of certainty. Ariel has told me that the time of the past has happened and should never be trifled with. But the time of the future hasn't been written yet, and is quite fluid. Any small thing could change it. This journal could have come from a time when you failed, and you are changing that future right now. If you want any amount of certainty, you must speak with Ariel about this. I shall, Dane said firmly, putting the journal back into his sleeve. Is there any insight that you could give me to know how to defeat the darkness? <sighs> I feel I have reached the end of my own understanding. Nanahuatzin smirked and nodded. Whether it was you or another, I knew this day would come, he answered with a smile. 
Holding his hand towards his throne, twelve intensely colored crystal shards floated over the screen towards them. Nanahuatzin then held his other hand forward as a staff appeared with a ring on either end. The crystals were then mounted into the rings in a starburst pattern. This staff, the Shining Rod, uses these crystals to harness and focus the ultimate light you and Ariel share. As I said before, the ultimate light is something created exclusively by humans. If enough of it existed, I could use it. But alas, the world is growing darker and is getting harder and harder to find that light. I leave it to you, White Mage. Nanahuatzin said, putting a hand on his shoulder. If humans are the only ones able to produce this ultimate light, then how is it that Ariel and I share it if she is a goddess? Asked Dane. Nanahuatzin lowered his gaze, squeezing his shoulder a bit. In her form as Zephania, she is much more human than goddess. Much of that is your doing. Be sure to take care of my sister, Wade. He finished when Dane found himself standing on the ground in a plain of Usoria. Well? Ephania asked. With a smile on his face, Dane presented the staff he held in his hands. It appears that we aren't completely without hope, Dane answered. Ephania walked to him in awe, looking over the embedded crystals. The Aurora crystals. I never imagined that he would give them away so freely, she whispered, running her hand over them. Nanahuatzin told me that these crystals would harness our light to combat the darkness. Both of them smiled at one another feeling the first ray of hope they had seen in a long while. Ephania looked to the bandages on his arms and hands. Why were you so foolish in thinking that you could vanquish such a creature on your own, Dane? Have you truly grown so impatient? She asked. Once Ariel arranged the meeting with her brother, her return revealed Dane lying on the ground, his arms and hands covered in blood and smoldering cuts emanating a sallow presence in his skin. All around him were signs of battle. Had she been just a few moments later, Dane would have lost his life. Using her divine power, Ephania healed his wounds and rewound time, watching in horror as Dane fought off a creature made of darkness he had secretly extracted. She vowed that she would stay all the closer. If Dane was indeed so reckless, he would need more than just a relic of the gods to defeat this darkness. There is something that... Uh, Nana Huatzin has directed me to speak to you about, Dane said, reaching into his sleeve and pulling out the journal. Regarding what? Something in the journal? She inquired. No, the journal itself. Your brother told me that this journal isn't from the past, and there was no mage before me that attempted to rid the world of darkness. Is this true? And if so, when is this journal from? Dane asked with earnest innocence. Ephania held her hand out for the journal as her divine temporal power flowed from her fingers. The moment it touched her hand, images of a fierce battle flashed through her mind. Two men in red and blue armor fiercely fought. Five different color flashes cut the dark behind them. Betrayal, disappointment, desperation, hope, and blood all flashed through her mind before yanking her hand away and holding her head. Ephania, are you all right? Dane asked, reaching out and catching her before she fell back. Nodding, she took her balance once again and stared intensely at the journal, looking over the burns and cuts in the cover. This journal is from a time in the future. How far, I am unable to tell. The events surrounding this journal are too confused and jumbled to know for sure. You are the goddess of time. How can you not know when this is from? How can you not know that there was no age before me? Dane asked, raising his voice with each question. There are some things that are kept from me, Dane. Hidden things within the Chamber of Oblivion. Only my mother, Minerna, and those of the Red are permitted to know what lies within its walls. But you're the goddess of time. How are there things that you are not allowed to know? It has always been this way. Even from the time of the Great Beginning, before my brothers and I were born. 
looking to the journal. Dane threw it to the ground, summoning a ball of flames to his hand and obliterating it. If this journal is indeed from the future, then I have already thrown this world onto a different path. Isn't that right? Ephania nodded, thinking over the paths of time the world could have taken. Time was not bound to an absolute course, but it had changed since Dane found the journal. The damage may have been done, but at least from this point on, there will be no further damage inflicted. 